PlayStation 2 games on PS4. Oh man, I can play all those games that I never played as a kid. Alright. Yeah, library's kind of small, but hey, I guess sooner or later we'll release all those games I never played as a kid. You know, I keep hearing about how Chase Face and the PBGT love Dark Cloud so much, so maybe I'll save that for a later time. But now, I got a taste for some old school PlayStation 2 killing. Yeah! Murder! Oh man, it's just like the old days. Come on, Ink Bull, let's drive in my favorite car and go find Ouija. And oh look, it's Head Radio. Stripe Summer. Ooh, every day, every day. Aw, yeah. Claude's dressed in his leather jacket. Fucking love that leather jacket. I think I need to save because I'm a pansy who rips off Sir Toasty. Hmm. Okay, I'll just walk into this clearly mild yet untraversable safe house. Would you like to save? Why, yes, I would. Yeah, I don't think you're gonna have to be worried about that. Grand Theft Auto 3 Review! Grand Theft Auto 3 was the series' first step into the 3D realm. It was the PlayStation 2's killer app, and it made every sucker mom triggered! <laughs> and recently, with PlayStation 2 games on PS4, it would be a great time to discuss how it's aged and if it's still fun. So the story is about this mute Clint Eastwood lookalike named Claude, and the folks at Rockstar thought it would be pretty funny if they didn't reveal his name until San Andreas. Ha! <laughs> Those jokers. Claude escapes from the prison convoy after he's betrayed by Catalina, his lover. He gets in a car with a ball voiced by the wonderful guru, aka Keith Edward Ellum. May he rest in peace. You go with 8-Ball to the swanky Ouija, and while 8-Ball goes to get a blowjob, we gotta go pick up Misty. <sighs> I always knew Misty was a slut. Hanging out with some white guy and a black guy all the time. Sex jokes. Man, I am just blowing through these. In comparison to other GTA stories, GTA 3 has a really simple one. Claude gets betrayed, goes work for the Mafia, gets betrayed, works for the Yakuza, and then for Donald Love, who's probably enemies with Ernie Sandcastles. Then finds the Yakuza wiped out, wipes out the Cortel, and kills Catalina. And may or may not have killed Maria. TBH, she kind of deserved it. I mean, we got San Andreas with corruption of police, 90s street gangs, and cocaine distribution. GTA 4, we've got bowling. And in GTA 5, we got so many plot lines that I could be here all day talking about it. So let's just leave it that GTA 5 is where the story writing has evolved from the simplicity of GTA 3. And as I've said before numerous times, simplicity ain't a bad thing. And sometimes in today's age of gaming, where writers are striving to do what Kojima does, it's refreshing to find something simple, even if it's going back to the past. In my opinion, the only real problem with the story is how important Maria is for how unlikable she is. She's kind of the reason we were kicked out of the Mafia, and they want us to care for her? Secondly, I don't really buy that Salvatore was super paranoid and wanted Claude dead. I feel that was just a poor plot to voice you guys a Staunton Island, but whatever. Story is alright to kinda good. Now what about the gameplay? You know, that's what we all come here for. Some good old fashioned gameplay. You kill people, take their monies, their cars, and drive around avoiding the police. Eh? Take the missions where you get paid an obscene amount of money. Luigi, I'm glad to help you out in a time of need, but you don't need to pay me $1,500 for driving your girl. Yeah, it's, it's weird playing this game and then going to GTA 5 where Barely any of the missions gave you money, and in this one you can get paid up to a million dollars for doing one job! <laughs> Man, the economy's really gone downhill for the criminals. That being said though, there isn't anything to spend your money on besides weapons and resprays. So once you're done with the main game, nothing left but to moiter people. And once you're done with the main game, that's all what's worth doing in GTA 3. Unless you want to go for 100% completion to put a little beard on your buff boy. Also being said, completing this game, which I intended on doing until I found out there aren't very many great video guides, can be kind of annoying. Not as annoying or as tedious as the later games of the 3D era can get, but there's just one thing that makes this whole thing annoying. The lack of a map. Well besides this 
dinky little thing in the corner. There's no pause screen map either. You have to go by memory and just know where things are. Which further proves my point that going for 100% ain't worth jack. One problem that I forgot GTA 3 had was the car physics. And I talked this with a coworker once. I believe that every car in Liberty City is a bulldozer. Slow bulldozers, fast bulldozers, but regardless, a bulldozer. Like the cars that are fast in GTA 5 control like the construction vehicles in GTA 3. The only cars that don't, don't are the sports and muscle cars. The Patriot, Mafia, Sentinel, Diablo, whatever, and the Banshee are the only good cars you can find at the beginning. Still, they aren't that great. Like, I really did forget how not good the driving was. GTI 5 gets the driving the best. Thanks, Sam Hauser. While I can forgive the car physics, the one thing I can't forgive GTA 3, at least this port to the PS4, is this. What? The fuck? What? What? Okay, I get it, it's the first game. It's rough, but I don't care what you flames tell me. When you have a 3D game, it's ideal that you have some method of controlling the camera without using L1 to focus back on the player perspective. Even games that didn't have analog sticks let you control the camera in some shape or form. Like Kingdom Hearts. You use the L2 and R2 to control the camera. The only games I've recalled doing this weird press button to focus camera behind player is Ocarina of Time and Majora's Mask. And I didn't think it worked there either. But that's for another time. Let's talk about damn graphics, cause holy shit! <laughs> this game hasn't aged well. Well, I mean, it's still playable and some of the textures don't look too bad still, but the character models are so bad! They reuse the same models a lot in the streets. Like, it isn't an uncommon occurrence to see two people that are the same characters talking to each other. It's weird and uncanny. Especially uncanny. In the cutscenes, I mean, it looks alright, but they don't really display a lot of emotions. Besides looking deeply into Claude's Clint Eastwood squint, as if they want to kiss him. Oh, Claude, how I love you squint at me, you beautiful son of a bitch. Now, I know I talked a lot of shit about this game, but I do owe quite a bit to it. It's because of GTA 3 that I got back into gaming. Became the freak I am today. I love this game, but playing it again after playing the others has made me realize that this game ain't like it used to be. But still, if you're interested in trying GTA 3, it's on the PS4 for $15. And you can find it at the used game store for dirt. No, seriously, you can buy it for like $10 or $15. It's pretty cheap. Huh? One thing I used to love doing in this game is driving a tank and running over hundreds of thousands of innocent people. Oh, yeah. Open up in there! We got to the sand legs killing thousands of innocent people! Excuse me, guys. I gotta deal with some local enforcement. And then, I gotta go whack a couple of nut jobs in Canada. I'm looking at you, Nick. And then, I'll be back with some normal videos for you. Till then, stay classy, San Diego. Oh my god, no! Oh, oh shit, no! No! Oh god, no! Stop killing me! No! No! Stop beating me! You kill her! No! no. Watch this. Watch this.